Hi, I'm Joyce Lork, and I'm so excited that you're here. If you missed episode one, please go back and watch it. You'll really be glad that you did. You know, we need community. Find someone to walk this journey with you. Having a small group is an important key to my success in everything. We need each other. A small group is a handful of friends that join you on the journey of life. Something may pull you together in the beginning. It may be just a common goal or desire, like embarking on a health journey. Then you grow together and form bonds that will hold you together for life. We help each other stay on track. We cry for each other. We laugh and we celebrate every success. We face life together. We love each other and encourage every step of life for one another. Christ had a small group and we call them the apostles. Twelve is a great number. We meet together to discuss the word, the way, and the joy of God as we break bread together, just like they did. God never intended us to do life alone. We are the hands and the feet of Christ. Find a small group and join it. Better yet, call some friends and start your own small group. That's what we did. If we look at Acts 2, 46, it says, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. That's what a small group is. Perhaps you can partner with your spouse. This is my husband, Harry, next to salvation, God's greatest gift to me. Girls, I believe in God-arranged marriages. Pray for God to bring you the right man. You know, in the mornings, sleepy-eyed and only half awake, I hear the sounds of my husband praying for me to have a blessed day and a blessed life. I ask you, does it get any better than that? Thank you, God, for all your gifts to me, especially for my husband, Harry. Personal motivation is a huge and powerful tool for success in all endeavors. Embracing any life-changing plan must start with an important motivation factor that you can keep within your grip. It might often be just to be an active participant in the lives of our loved ones. You may have a combination of motivators, as most of us do. For me, I love my grandchildren, and I want to be around a long time to see them all graduate college and have children. I want to enjoy life with my husband all the way to the end, and I want to be healthy enough to serve God in whatever plans he has for me. These are all personal and good motivations, but there must be one single thing that is powerful enough to stop you in temptation. This is personal. My single and most important motivation is to offer Christ a clean temple. What is your personal motivation? You might ask yourself, why this plan? Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 6.19. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, first and foremost, our bodies are the temple of the Lord. During this lifetime, we are preparing ourselves to best serve God's plan for our lives and to face the challenges ahead. Let's look at Daniel 1.8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Daniel's commitment to the Lord enabled him to face the Lord's den and come out untouched and to face the fire unscathed. While our lives may not have quite the tests of Daniel, we can prepare ourselves to face whatever challenges confront us. God has provided many good things for us to eat. Let's look at Matthew 6, 31 through 33. What shall we eat or what shall we drink? Your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. First seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. <laughs> Some foods that God provides for us are right on the grocery shelf and take little or no preparation at all. We just need to follow God's word to inspire us and surrender to the Holy Spirit to guide us in his plans for our lives. Pick up a piece of fruit, celery, carrots, anything. You can just open up a can of deep water sardines packed in good olive oil, spread avocado on a healthy organic rice cracker, layer it with a little onion and a few organic capers, and top with a sardine. Delicious and nutritious. And no preparation hardly at all, just assembly. 
Let's look at why sweets are important. This plan is a life change, not a temporary diet. Sweets are important, especially in the long term. Have you ever been told that you could not have something you thoroughly enjoyed ever again? How long did that last for you? God has provided many sweets and luxurious foods for us. Jesus attended celebrations and ate good food. What he did not eat was food that had been sacrificed to false gods. When we eat unhealthy foods today, we are eating food sacrificed to the false gods of longer shelf life and more money. It isn't just the food growers or the production people or those that put all those additives into our foods, but it's also our own selves for purchasing it. One of the first complaints I hear about eating healthy is that organic costs too much. Can we think that it was easy for Daniel to choose to eat clean food? What price did he pay? Moreover, after a week of eating all clean foods, we need less food because our bodies recognize clean food as food and it goes to work to nurture our bodies. Cravings begin to subside. We are no longer slaves to unhealthy eating. You know, from the beginning of time, God provided sweets for us in the forms of honey, dates, and delicious fruits. These delicious sweets are mentioned throughout the Bible. They were important enough to be traded and bartered for, as well as offered as tokens of goodwill. Look for the date cakes in the scriptures. Dates have become a staple in my home and a way to sweeten many recipes. God has provided well for us, and it includes sweets. Once you know you can have good, healthy sweets and feel secure in that, it shrinks temptation to its true size. My husband often says, eat like Daniel, sing and dance like David. That strikes a really nice image in my mind. Let's look at John 4, 4. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So temptation has already been taken care of if you trust God. You might be asking yourself, will this plan work for me? Let's look at Proverbs 16.3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Commit your life to God, and you will succeed, not only in this, but other things. Remember, this plan is about getting healthy in our minds, bodies, and spirit. Weight loss is a side bonus of being healthy. Fourteen years ago, I read a great book by Rick Warren that stated, it's not about you. <laughs> I must admit that while I thought I was fully ready to embrace a committed relationship with God at that time, it took me another full year before I could continue reading the rest of that book after that paragraph. The point is that it's about God's plan for us. The good news is, that if we follow God's plan, the results are then up to Him because it is not about you. So we're off the hook for the results. Let's read Matthew 22:37. It's the greatest commandment. Jesus said to him, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. When you think about it, can any of us on our own grow even one hair on our head? No. But all things are possible through God if we put our trust in Him. You can do this and have the health and the body you have dreamed of. Stay with me as we start the basics next time. God bless my friend. Joyce Lorick can remember the day her life changed. She weighed 228 pounds. She heard God speak to her. Food is not your enemy, he said. Soon after, Joyce found the Daniel plan. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 4.17 Now Joyce has put her own spin on healthy cooking and wholesome nutritious ingredients and is bringing it to your table. Must have recipes like healthy lasagna and hot crab and asparagus. Mac and cheese, strawberry cacao, no cheese cheesecake are a blessing in disguise for anyone who wants to eat healthier while enjoying all of the luscious foodstuffs God has provided us. Cooking for the Daniel Plan by Joyce Lorick. <laughs>